So. Bring Corbin on and I'll debate him. Play the process. It exists for a reason. Oh my god, I've lost two lives. I thought I was gonna die. They should just be written responses from each other. What does social I engineering mean to you? I'm curious. Um, you engineer somebody socially. <laughs>
You won't destroy me. I'll destroy you on this debate. Sure, here's the thing. You're in, in a literal rock slide avalanche, and then you cast sure. like a giant bridge on, on top of you go, yo, that you go. totally believe in, but then yeah. no one else does, right? Okay. Why would the rocks interact with that bridge? The rocks don't have to believe in the bridge. Like, they have no belief in it. They would just go right through and kill you. Maybe you'd be able to walk on the bridge because you believe that it exists, but the, but the bridge wouldn't interact with every other thing like it's real, only with the things that believe in it, and rocks don't believe in bridges. What Koibu said is... That if I believe that the bridge, if, if I believe that the umbrella is there, then for me, the water will not go through. I don't believe you. It's no way. It can't, can't be true. Otherwise, that would be so incredibly broken. You could literally just broken. summon That's that. That's why he just removed the spell. Oh, well, no, he should. It only my interpretation. Those. My interpretation is probably closer to rules as written, and it's a better interpretation. So fuck him. It only stops the rain for those that believe it is there, which splits reality into two camps. No, that's dumb. The umbrella should be there. You should be able to touch it and interact with it, but it won't stop any rain because the rain itself doesn't believe in the umbrella. It just passes through. Yeah, but can rain believe? No, it can't. That's why it would just pass okay, through. Can rain disbelieve? It, it doesn't it have. It's We're agnostic. Gonna... You don't Easy. have to disbelieve it. You have to believe it for it to be real. The assumed position is it's not real. That's explicitly stated. Rules as written for the spell. Well, I'm correct because Koibu said I'm correct. So but Bring Koibu on and I'll debate him. I will bring him on. Bring get him, him on. Here. Message him. Get him in here. Chat, get him in here. Koibu, can you please join Discord for a minute? I love you. Unless you're busy. Careful. I don't know why I said careful. I don't know why the fuck I'm calling. Server settings. Uh, role members. Koibu. Yep, he's got notable. I hope he joins. You'll be destroyed on the intellectual playing field. Harder than you've ever been destroyed before. What? Anyway, please be safe. Alright, what's this shit about? Okay, Koibu, listen to me. Listen please to my you. arguments, okay? This spell called solipsism, right? <clears throat> Fuck solipsism. Okay, no, 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 no. I think solipsism is a good <laughs> spell. Solipsism. I think it's a good spell, but no. this is what has to be taken into account, okay? Other physical inanimate objects... Okay, the default position on something summoned with solipsism is that it doesn't exist. It requires somebody to have a belief in said thing to exist. So inanimate objects will never interact with that summoned thing. So, for instance, if I summon an umbrella, I might see one, and I can even touch it and feel it, but if I put it above my head, the raindrops will fall through. The raindrops don't believe in the umbrella, so they should just pass right through. I might believe it's there, and I might be able to touch it, and maybe even walk on it if I were to put it on the ground. But if I were to throw a rock at it, it should fall through, because rocks do not believe. Much the same way that if I summoned a giant, and I believe that giant is real, maybe it could punch me and do damage to me, but it couldn't pick up another object and move it, because that object would have to profess a belief in the giant in order for it to be moved. That's my position on how solipsism ought to work. So how does your sword interact with the giant when your sword doesn't believe that giant exists? <clears throat> Um, the sword, you would strike it, and you would feel the strike. But the sword doesn't believe that But you would be holding exists. it in your body, and your body would feel that so? it exists. Yeah. So, but the sword, Steven. The sword doesn't believe. Sword. Your clothes will get What if you shoot an arrow at it? Your arrow doesn't believe. True. Yeah. Then you know what? Then those things would just pass through it. So, so would it have to be a magic spell. sword? It's dumb. That's all I have to say. It would just it's pass dumb. through it. Fuck he Koibu. Left. He's wrong. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Devin was right. <laughs> Shit, DM. Get him out of here. I am exclusively. I am scaling into. I'm gonna take all of our money in of dice and or of yeah of dice. I'm gonna steal it. I'm gonna buy the solipsism skill book and I'm gonna learn it. I'm gonna cast it every goddamn day and then I'm gonna learn how to use a bow and I'm gonna drop shot every fucking fight. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, I told you you get mentally fucking dominated and destroyed by him. Why'd you even bring him in? Oh my god. Look we're going to create the most broken... You know what we're going to oh, do? Yeah. Do you know what we're going to do from now on? We're going to take over this fucking world. <laughs> Hold on. Let me think. Hold on. Let me let me, let me me check Lenny real quick. I think there's some dumb... This is what we're going to do. The next fight, okay? Are you ready? Yeah, what? Hold on. Yeah, Skoibu banned my spell because it's too good. I have something called Halfling Nimbleness that says you can move through the space yep. of any creature that... Oh, you're not a size larger than me, though. We're both medium mm. or whatever, right? Or small. Yeah, I'm medium. Are you small or are you medium? Wait. No, Halflings must be the same size, no? Wait, are Halflings small? I don't know. Okay, here's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to infinitely kill ranged people by... Both of us are going to be prone. You're going to be in front of me taking the dodge action. So you're going to be okay. prone... 
I'm going to be behind you with full cover. I'm going to crawl in front of you to take a shot with my boat and then crawl behind you because I can move through you with my halfling nimbleness every fucking time. People have to shoot. They can only hit Does you. Does have a bow? And every, yeah, I do. And every shot's going to be taken at disadvantage with... And if they shoot at me, it's at disadvantage and with full cover. We're going to be like... We're just going to patrol the lands, <laughs> going prone, crawling through Arcadia. Lying through the fucking ground. Drop shotting everybody. That's what we're going to be doing, Okay. <laughs> Fuck these. I don't want to do this because Koibu is going to like, he's going to see, there's going to be some gnolls and they're going to see this. And then later in a future campaign, we're going to have drop shotting gnolls who are proning through the fucking ground shooting at us. If we both die and I'm dice some men, we're going to re-roll all archer characters from now on. Every character I make from now on is going to be a ranged fighter. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, did you ever play RuneScape? No. So the funniest thing to do in RuneScape, if you had two bows, it's called one-shot special with magic short bows. What you would do is you would shoot once, and then you'd do a special right after, so it'd be like three shots right in a row. So if two rangers were running in from the wildy and you see a dude, you could basically both be like, all right, we're going to one-shot spec. You both shoot him, you both spec, and it's six points of damage. Magic short bow can be huge damage. You can drop somebody instantly. Imagine having like four rangers or four oh, fighters that are archers that have action surge and fucking superiority dice and all of you oh, would be like fucking chat. <laughs> oh shit Shh. never mind never mind never mind never mind anyway we all agree that sentinel was super broken right yeah sentinel was fucked barbo shouldn't have lost that fight chat just a heads up barbo holds that deep within himself and is upset by it 41 minutes. This is uh, Rochelle Sheffield for the debtor, and Philip Bernal is with me. He's in your office with you? Yes. Hey, Mr. Bernal, you there? I am present. Yeah. Mr. Bernal, would you raise your right hand? Yes. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? This is Max William. Yes. State your full name, please. Philip Paul Burnell. Oh, God, it sounds like my name. Address still the same as the address on the petition? What is that self-employment? Uh, the company's name is Burnell Productions. It is internet content creation of on-demand and also live video streaming services. Find that again, please. Sure. How, why would this leak? Recording ripped from a fat, bald Dracula. Why, um, why would this leak? That's a good question. Who would leak this? It's an internet content creation uh, of on-demand video and also live streaming video services. <clears throat> or is this, is this supposed to be like a deposition? I mean, I guess if it is, then, um... It would, it would, are depositions necessarily public access without some good reason for it? I, I'm, I'm not sure if depositions are always made public or not. It seems like they'd have to be, right? Or at least transcripts of them? I'm sorry, what was that? I'm hearing a beeping. Are you hearing it on your end? I, I'm hearing it too, but I don't know. No idea what that might be. We'll hope it goes away. <laughs> Scuffed depositions. Is the property insured? Yeah. And is this a house or a condo? Mr. Burnell, is this a house or a condo? Hello? Burnell? <laughs> what is this? Nancy? Yes? Sorry, there's 60 people on the line for this call. So I think that's the problem. Oh, wait, did the call, did the number somehow for this leak? Okay. But uh, we're back on. Okay. Drop out and then... I don't... I don't that beeping's coming from. Okay. Well, let's try and just keep going. Okay. You answer the question whether or not you have electronics, you say no. Is that a correct answer? 
I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Your schedules indicate you have no electronics. Is that correct? Uh, no electronics. Are you speaking of in regards to the business or in regards to my personal belongings? Well, your personal, this is your personal bankruptcy. So this there are the electronics that are considered business assets, and then personal electronics would be in the household goods and furnishings um, section. I just kind of lump them together. Um, I don't know how the judge is going to treat this. So this is really hard under tax law. So technically, any computer that you use that you either depreciate for business or you write off for business is, one, is supposed to be 100% utilized for the purposes of that business. So if you buy a computer and a monitor and you use it for streaming, even if you use it for 20 hours a day for streaming, if you use it for 30 minutes a day for personal use, technically, legally, you're not supposed to, to claim that. Um, now, realistically, in real life, it might play it a little bit differently. Usually, your best case scenario is to have like a personal laptop or something and say, well, this is what I use for my personal you know, stuff, and then everything for my computer is business-related. Um, it's going to be really hard, I think, to tr well, we'll see in the deposition. I could be full of shit, but I would imagine it would be really hard to say every single electronic in your household is dedicated to business if you don't have at least one device on, on your, in your house, it's like, oh no, I have a personal laptop that I do personal things from, but my computer stuff is dedicated to streaming. If you ever have to make this argument in front of the IRS, I would imagine you would need at least one personal device or something. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to buy that every single um, time you're on your computer is for business purposes, for every single electronic device. Okay, so let me go through some assets that some of your creditors have told me that you might own. And if you could tell me if they're personal or business and if you still have them. You have a PlayStation 4 Pro system. That's correct. That is uh, business related, and I do still have it. Okay. About a standard PlayStation 4. That is, uh, I still own it. It is uh, business related. PlayStation 3? Yep, that is uh, business-related. I still have it. <clears throat> Nintendo Wii? Uh, business-related. Nintendo Wii U? Yes, business-related. I do still own it. So creditors of Phil, when you file bankruptcy, so a lot of people think bankruptcy is like you're just saying you're broke or blah, blah, blah. What you're doing when you file for bankruptcy is you're asking a court to say, hey, I need you to protect me because these guys are going to come and take all my shit. I'm going to get fucked. So I need you. I'm requesting bankruptcy protection. Now, when you file for bankruptcy protection, um, depending on what chapter you file, what type of bankruptcy you file, what creditors are going to say when you go to the bank, when you go to the court is they're going to be like, OK, well, hold on. This guy is saying he's got no money. I know that this motherfucker has shit that he can sell to pay me back. OK, here are some assets I think he has. You need to you know, validate this and say whatever. Um, so this is what they're going through right now. Right. Is creditors have said, we believe that Phil is possessing these things. He should liquidate these in order to pay us our money back. Now, what Phil is going to argue, successfully or unsuccessfully, is, well, actually, all of these assets that I own, these are part of my business. This is part of what I use to generate income. You can't take this from me. I need it to make any type of payments. You file a Chapter 13, Chapter 11, Chapter 13, um, if I want to pay back the bank to pay my, my creditors, um, I need to have some form of income. Um, when it comes to things like consoles, so like PlayStation, Nintendo Wii, all of that, these are easy, easy, easy business expenses. I never, ever play any of these consoles unless I'm streaming. I exclude exclusively use these for the purpose of my business. There's no reason to expect why I would play my PlayStation or Wii if I'm not streaming it. Super easy business expenses. There shouldn't it shouldn't be a problem to defend something like this as being an asset that's used for your business 100%. Nintendo Switch? Yes, business related and I do still own it. <clears throat> Xbox 360. Yes, Xbox 360 business related I do still own it. Nintendo 3DS. Yes, business related, and I do still own that. Damn, this motherfucker's got every console. Holy shit. PlayStation Vita. Uh, yes, I do still own the PlayStation Vita, and uh, it is business related, and I do still own it. Yes. PlayStation Virtual Reality. 
yes, I do still own the PlayStation uh, Virtual Reality, and it is business-related, and I have it. <clears throat> you have a computer? Whoever's making the beeping sound, if you please stop. you have a computer? I do have a business-related computer, yes. Home computer? I'm sorry. Could you... Home computer? Oh, no, I do not have a, a home-related computer. No, it's just a business-related computer. Do you have an iPad? Um, I do. It is very old and not functional. <laughs> Explain to me how you decide, decide if it's business-related um, or your personal property. So the key words here that you're looking for, I would imagine Phil's lawyers prepped him on this, is that these business assets are exclusively used in service of your business. You do not personally interact with these off business hours or without the purpose of using them or utilizing them for your business. That is the only reason these exist. You don't play these in your free time or anything. You exclusively utilize these assets for the purposes, uh, for the service of your business, 100%. Sure. Uh, anything that I say is business related is used solely for the purpose of my internet video content creation or my live streaming. Mm -hmm. uh, I you know, broadcast video games all day six days a week, and so everything that I just listed is used as a device to cast gaming. Yes. Okay, who purchases the various gaming pieces? I do. Personally? Yes. Does the business have a separate business bank account? Yeah, okay. Now, this gets really, really, really... I don't know how big in a tax law we're going to go. I don't know if that was a trick question or not. So... When you buy something, when she asked personally, Phil might be stepping into a little bit of a trap here where he's thinking, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I buy them myself, of course. But what the lawyer is getting at is, is are you using a business account that holds business revenue wow. that's either flowing through like an LLC or some sort of S corp or whatever, right? Are you, ex are you using business funds to purchase business assets? Um, you, for instance, now I don't know if she's going to check for this, but you wouldn't use your personal money to buy something for a business and then also like write it off on your personal taxes and, and like flow through your business taxes as well, right? You have to be really careful that you're not trying to double dip there or whatever. Um, so for me, for, for instance, for my setup, I have business credit cards. When I pay those, those are paid out of a business account. And all of the money that my business, Destiny.gg LLC, earns flows through to that business account. None of it hits my personal bank account unless it's paid out to me in the form of a paycheck, which I pay myself with a W-2, or if I take a distribution from my company. Um, intermingling of funds is a big no-no when it comes to business or tax law because you don't want... Um, you don't want to make it look like you're buying shit on your personal dollars and trying to write it off as a business expense. You have to be really, really careful to try to make sure you have an absolute separation between your business income and expenses and your personal income and expenses. Um, so we'll see how he makes his way through this. No. Wait, what did she ask? Hold on. Yes. Does the business have a separate business bank account? No. That's, that is so incredibly scary. Um, if you want to do a business that is like almost intermingled with your personal life, so you might be like a roofer, a contractor, a plumber, an electrician or whatever. So I've been given this advice a lot. I would highly recommend an absolute fucking iron wall between your business expenses and your personal expenses. When I do my taxes at the end of the year, my business taxes are easier than my taxes used to be. All I have to do is I open up Wells Fargo, I click my checking deposits, and all the deposits I've gotten through the year is all of my business income, full stop, that's it. I never get paid personally. Every paycheck, everything is made in, in name of my business. Destiny GJ LLC, using my employer identification number for my LLC. Nothing is ever paid to me personally, ever. That separation helps it for tax purposes. I, all the money going in and out of my business bank account has to be accounted for. As long as you account for that in and out, you're fucking clean, you're clear. Now, you can argue with me over what's a business expense in the account, but nothing touches my personal bank account that hasn't been accounted for on my on an 1120S, which is like your business tax filing or whatever. Super, super, super important to have that separation. If you're commingling all of your funds in the same bank account, it's going to be way harder to make an argument that like, okay, well, hold on, okay? Now, you get paid into your personal bank account for some of these services. You're buying PlayStations and shit? You're going to tell me this is a business expense? Like, how do you track this? How do you know? It's going to be really hard to justify or defend those purchases if all of your funds are um, commingled. So you be super, super, super careful about stuff like that.
give the disclaimer? I'm not giving a disclaimer here. This is legit ass fucking tax and business advice. I will say that. Fuck it. I don't care. If you are going to start a business or if you're going to start some other business entity, I am. I would absolutely recommend to you as somebody with experience in this area, you should absolutely have a separate business checking account, not even just business cards, right? Which I do. So I have credit cards in the name of my business and credit cards that I personally have. You should have a separate business checking account. Go to the bank, give them your employee identification number and open a fully separate account. Again, you want a wall. You want an iron fucking wall. Okay. The great wall of fucking China between your personal expenses and a business bank account and your business expenses. You do not want like, oh, I just did work for UTA. Oh, cool. You pay me, you know, some thousands of dollars for sponsor. I'm I'm just going to put that in my personal checking account and I'll just remember it later. You want an absolute separation. You might be able to get away with like playing it hard, fast and loose or fucking around or whatever. But if you ever have like a bankruptcy thing, if you ever have like a tax audit or if you have anything like that, you're in so you're going to have such a fucking headache trying to figure out like, okay, fuck, what was the business expense? What was personal? How do I keep this in track of like blah, 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 right? If I buy something for my business, I use a business credit card and then I swipe it and that's my business card. And my business credit card is automatically paid out of my business checking account. So any withdrawal made from that checking account to pay for a credit card is a business expense. And I know because I only use my business cards. Business, like shit like that is so important to have these, these separations up. Okay, sorry. We'll keep listening. Did you see RTBA's question? Wait, what? In your experience, how many Twitch streamers do the things you're saying now? Would a majority or minority? I think almost no Twitch streamer. You'd never take business advice from most from any Twitch streamer. I guess not me as well. But like, yeah, I don't think most people do this. Um, yeah, just on an, on the off the record, just like when I talk to people that prepare taxes and do things for streamers, like they're usually pretty surprised that I even have like a anything related to this setup. It's usually a fucking nightmare to do taxes for streamers. For me, like all of my shit is itemized. Like they just give me a list. Oh, cool. Well, what's your expenses for the year? I can just throw everything from my shit onto a spreadsheet. I, like it took me, I think this year it took me like 20 minutes to prepare my taxes for my tax filer. It's super easy. So it's so easy when you have everything separated out. Um, yeah. For some of the larger streamers, I imagine if they have like personal accountants or whatever, maybe they do this for them or managers, which are in the streaming world are really babysitters. Maybe that's true. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Do you have an S Corp or a C Corp? I have an S Corp. Um, there was a reason for this. I don't remember. It's a long time ago. I think it has to do with how income can flow from an S-corp to an individual via distributions. I don't think you can take distributions out of an LLC. I think it all has to flow through. I don't remember. Um, I thought for a C-corp, you need to have an actual corporate structure or something. Um, but like all of the advantages that go to C-corps in terms of like being able to like draw like shares or I, I don't need any of that bullshit. I don't know. I, I just, uh, my, I took, um, uh, if you open an LLC in any state, you should be able to file a form 2553 to elect for the IRS to treat you as an S corp, which gives you some preferential status depending on what you're doing. You should talk to like your your personal tax advisor or account to figure out what kind of business structure makes sense for you. But yeah, do you pay yourself a salary or what? How do you take money out of your business? So there's two ways you can get money out of your business. One, I run payroll, so I pay myself a set amount of money every year. Salaries are good because if you have a payroll company, you can do automatic withholdings for FICA or for state and federal tax, which is nice because I don't have to pay a massive lump sum at the end of the year. So you can take out an actual wage that you pay yourself. And then the second way to do it is to withdraw money directly from your uh, business account into your personal account. And if you do that, that's called a distribution. So taking a distribution out of your company has a couple of benefits. Well, the big benefit is you don't have to pay payroll taxes on it. And now you see, oh, holy shit, this is why motherfuckers have an S corp. If I make a hundred thousand in a year as a self employed person, well, when you file that form, that the um, the SE form, the self employment tax form, you have to pay payroll taxes on all of your fucking net income, gross income. I think on your gross income actually uh, for your um, for your business for your business income. It's fucking brutal. If you have an S corp. You can pay yourself a fair wage out of your S-Corp, and you can take the rest as distributions. If I pay myself 60000 on my business income and take forty k as a distribution, um, on that distribution, I still owe federal and state taxes, but I don't have to pay payroll taxes, which is very fucking helpful. Holy shit. Um, Destiny, it's net. Is it net? I'm trying to remember. Do you have to pay, um, do you have to pay FICA on your gross or your net business income? I don't remember. It might be net, but it's still like really brutal, but yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, ready? 
Do TTS donations go to your business or personal account? Every single bit of money that you could possibly give me, whether you sub on Twitch, whether you sub on my website, whether you donate to me on PayPal, all of that goes to a business account first. None of that money ever touches one of my personal accounts unless I pay it to myself via a paycheck or unless I take a distribution from my company. Nothing you do can get me money. There's no way, even if you wanted to, you could not put money into one of my personal accounts without it going to a business account first. Have a separate business bank account? No. Okay, so this is scary. We'll see where we go from here. How do you decide what salary you get? You have to pay yourself a fair market salary. The IRS tips that I've gotten from tax attorneys um, is that you should pay yourself at, l at, the, at the least 50% of your income. But it's really hard to determine what is a fair market salary for a streamer, of course. Does the business file its its own tax return? I'm not sure how how did well it looks like they are do you file a separate tax return for the business, or is it all in your personal? I just do one tax return, so it must okay. be my personal. Yeah. So that means that he's elected to be self-employed, which means he only files a 1040 um, with a with a. I think is it Schedule SC? So the Schedule SC is part of your 1040, and this is where all of your business income and I think expenses go as well. Um, so an 1120S would be if he had a separate business, but um, the Schedule SC should account for. I think I think I might not get the forms 100% correct. But I think it has um, all of your earnings and your subtract and your deductions for your business shit. Um, how did you learn all of this? Because I used to use H and R Block. I did H and R Block for my taxes one year, and they fucked it up, and I got ultra fucking triggered. So I learned all the tech shit myself. Um, yeah, your Schedule C might actually be where you work through deductions and everything, um, including your pr profit. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Your Schedule C is profit and loss from business. I'm sorry, you're right. So um, Darkside Phil is filing a Schedule C. What you do from a so sole proprietorship means that you're like self employed and you don't have a business. Um, is is this guy right there? Fuck, there you go. Um, would be the Schedule C. Your business is included on your personal tax return? Yes. There's nothing technically wrong with that. That's okay. You can be a sole proprietor. But it's going to get tricky depending on the questions that are asked. Do you own or have any access to any online gaming packages? Uh, if you mean like subscription-based gaming services, yes. Correct. Yes. Um, an LLC can be taxed as a sole proprietorship. I could be wrong, but I don't think LLCs are taxed. I think an LLC is a disregarded entity because all of the income that goes to an LLC is a, it's a, it's considered a flow through entity. I think the only way a business files taxes is if it's an S corp or C corp. But I could be wrong on that. Um, yeah, don't. Uh, this is getting into a little more shady territory. I don't think an LLC itself ever files taxes because the LLC doesn't have a tax rate or anything. There is. It doesn't make sense for an LLC to file taxes. All of the income should flow through onto somebody's ten forty. I believe. Tell me how those work as far as ownership. How does that work as far as ownership? Was that the question? Yes. Uh, they're all personally in my name, connected with my own personal online accounts, and they are all business-related in order to uh, play video games online. Many of these services are required in order to actually play games in a multiplayer capacity. This is so scary. How many, how many subscriptions do you have? Um... I, off the top of my head, I would say at least three. I know that there's one for Nintendo, there's one for Xbox, and there's one for PlayStation. There may be more if I actually were to you know, d dive deep, but I believe those are the three main ones. <clears throat> How much does each of them cost? Oh, man. Uh, this is just an estimate. I would assume each one roughly costs around $50 a year there, because I, I don't have the information in front of me, but I certainly could you know, break that down at a later date. So they're about $50 a year? That's what I would estimate, yes. <clears throat> okay. So these crowdfunding, this is, would be considered like uh, someone wants to give you a gift and that's how they give it to you? Uh, yes. From my understanding, from speaking with my tax attorney, 
uh, a uh, charitable contribution. It would be the same as if someone went to a restaurant and you were a waiter or a waitress or a bartender and did a good job, and someone said, oh, I really like the job you did, so they would send, give the person a tip. Uh, so it's the same premise with me. If I'm doing a really live stream or if I put out on people really enjoy, they have the completely optional ability Okay, you have to be so careful about this. So you hear a lot of weird things from servers and waitresses and shit, okay? Um, <clears throat> some people say... Um... <sighs> okay, hold on, shit. I'm going to try not to get triggered. I'm sorry, one second. For your tips, Paige. Okay, so somebody is saying LLCs aren't always a disregarded entity. It depends on how they're structured. Single-member LLCs are disregarded depending on the elections you make. You can elect to have your LLC taxed as an LS, uh, C Corp as it would have to file its own 1120. It can obviously tax a partnership. Yes, that is true. I mentioned that earlier, that there is a particular form that you can file. Um, whatever whatever that S Corp election form was the one that I filed. If your LLC is filing a form to be treated as a different tax entity like a C Corp or an S Corp or a partnership, then you would have to file a different tax thing for it. So for instance, I file an 1120S for my business. I'm 99% um, positive that I said this explicitly, but an LLC on its own is a disregarded entity unless you've elected to be uh, to be taxed as some other thing. But okay, sorry. Um, okay, sometimes servers say things like, "Oh, like, do I have to claim my tips?" And you might hear commonly something stated, "Oh, yeah, um, you only have to claim five or ten percent of your tips." This is not true. From an IRS perspective, you should be claiming every single tip you make. Now, you might be able to claim a little enough so that the business that you operate under doesn't have to pay you a higher minimum wage, okay? So, for instance, if you don't claim any tips and you're only making two thirteen an hour, I believe in mo in every state, they the um, even though you make two thirteen an hour as a minimum wage as a server, they have to compensate your wage up to whatever the state minimum wage would be, unless they have a separate minimum wage for it. But they have to they have to make up the difference in your check, so you have to claim enough to get over that. But some people think that past that, you don't have to claim anything. That is not true. You should be claiming every single tip you make. Um, if you are a streamer and you are getting donations, all of that money is a taxable like that's that is a taxable event you you it's it's income like plain and simple period um you're, you're gonna see it show up either on um i believe it's a 1099k is what paypal files um you might get some form of 1099 from twitch who is going to account for bits and stuff but it is absolutely taxable they are not gifts in the way that if a friend gives you ten dollars legally speaking you don't have to record that on on any irs sheet but whew, good luck Okay. Uh, per, my, per my tax attorney, PayPal tips are basically considered like a tip that you would leave at a restaurant. So if, if you have a good uh, bartender or a good waiter or waitress, you would leave them a tip. Um, that's exactly what my PayPal tip stage is. If I'm doing a good live stream for the day or if I put out on-demand video content that people think is you know good, they will optionally and willingly send me a tip via my PayPal tip stage. That's how it works. Okay. I'm looking at the PayPal account that you have sent me. One has Twitch Interactive Incorporated, sends you a check, and then it looks like that same amount goes out, says instant withdraw to debit card. How does that work? Yes. Well, what it is is that it file account, and then I put it into my bank account via the debit card. It's an instant okay. transfer, so that way I can use it, you know, for bills and other things. Okay. What is Patreon? PayPal can go right into your normal account. As long as you meet a minimum threshold of transactions on PayPal, they will file something called a 1099K, where PayPal is accounting for every dollar that goes into that PayPal account. It's totally fine to take stuff out of your PayPal account into a normal account. PayPal, well... I would say you should still do it into a business account, although you have to account for it and it would bring your taxes. But it's absolutely 100% fair for because PayPal will file a 1099, assuming you meet a threshold um, to account for the income you've made in there anyway. It's being accounted for. Ah, yeah, Patreon? Have you filed 2019? I don't recall which year you sent me. Have you filed 2009? I sent 2018. Have you filed your 19 yet? Oh, yes, I have. Um, in fact, I sent the final information within the last week, but my tax attorney notified me that he was coronavirus situation that 
everything's being delayed and it's not available yet, but I certainly could provide that, you know, when it is available. Okay, so when you say you sent it, who did you send it to? My tax attorney. It's okay. This is a meta gaming a little bit. I wonder if they rushed to file the 2019... I, this is pure bullshit conjecture speculation, but I wonder if he rushed to file or get that 2019 tax return done because there are things in the 2018 he didn't want the lawyer to or the judge to see. I, that's just I wonder. But you list business assets of one thousand five hundred dollars. Is that correct? Yes. No way. He's that smart. Well, no. His his attorney would suggest that. Like, hey, here is some. Th and this is by the way. Hey, by the way. In the United States of America, um, hold on. There's a really, really, really good quote. Um, there's a, oh God, what is this quote? If the facts are against you, hammer the law. If the law is against you, hammer the facts. The facts and the law are against you, hammer the opposing counsel. If fucking processes exist for a reason, when you go to court, your goal is not to be a good person an honest person, or a righteous person. Your goal is to play the fuck out of the system and to maximize the amount of benefit that you can get every fucking time. Don't do anybody's fucking, don't, you're not doing anybody a favor by proselytizing. Um, wait, that's like when you prostrate yourself and you, not pro prostrate, when you go prostrate and like ask for forgiveness. Wait, no, 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 proselytizing when you praise for something. Can wait, I get a wow? I use this word a lot. Hold on, I should know this. Proselytizing. Proselytizing. Okay. You're, you're not like, you're not like convincing anybody that you're like a fucking holy person. You're not there to like make people think you're good. You're not there to like um, throw yourself and fucking martyr yourself before the court. Fuck all that shit. Okay. Play the process. It exists for a reason. And usually it's there to protect the, um, the, the, um, the defendant. So if you have, so if you've got to go and somebody's asking you like, oh, what's like a recent tax return? Blah 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 blah. If your shit sucks for 2018, fuck that shit. You get you file that 2019 in fucking January 2nd, and then you show up with that tax return, and you go, here you go, buddy. Anybody that doesn't play the court system to their favor as much as possible is either uneducated, uninformed, or poor. Don't be any of those people. Okay, educate yourselves, inform yourselves, and don't be poor. At least not when it comes to getting a lawyer. Okay. Um, Anybody that makes fun of anybody for like, oh, dude, you're trying to shortcut. You're trying to do this because you know you're wrong. Ha, fuck you, motherfucker. I'm not here to say if I'm right or wrong, okay? You're the one that's here to prove shit against me. If you can't do it, that ain't my problem, motherfucker. Get bent. Get fucked. Get the fuck out of here. You can't prove shit? Then leave me the fuck alone, okay? That's what you're after, okay? 100%. Okay. All right. Sorry. Good luck. So it's your, your testimony, then, that the business machines that we went through that you indicated were all business assets, such as your, your various PlayStation machines, if you were to liquidate those, the value would be $1,500. Sure. If I were to liquidate them today, uh, you know, estimating, you know, a ballpark value, like, a, you know, garage sale or sell them immediately. That's yeah. totally fair. You could even argue that they'd be worth less than that. Totally fair. He has like 10 consoles. You're not getting $150 for an old, for a fucking 3DS or some shit. No fucking way. Um, that he could maybe even do less. I wonder if that $1,500 includes a computer system. Absolutely. Most of, most of the stuff there, like the computer is very old. It's over six years old. Oh, he has included a computer. That's a little scary. But... And the only business you have is Brunel Production? That is correct. <clears throat> okay. How about Twitch? How much do you make us a month from Twitch? Uh, I would average, let's just say between 3000 it could be a little higher or a little lower. But don't ever say, let's just say. That's just rhetorically is really bad. Let's say I make the, don't ever say that. That's a really bad phrase to, say, to utter to it in general. I, or at least I feel that. Yeah, yeah I, I think I'm hitting upon most of it. You know, they, Wait, fuck. I'm so sorry. I was typing something. I missed this. Um, you know, maintenance on set equipment every month. Um, it could be uh, the uh, internet, cost of internet every month. It could be cost of, you know, utilities necessary for the business. You know, cost of cell phone for the Oof, okay, so you'd have to check specific tax provisions. I think you can claim a percentage of these things. Trying to argue that all of them are used exclusively in the service of the business seems hard. Like I think that you can um I think that you can argue that like a percentage of your internet could be written off, especially if you pay for like a faster service. I don't know if you can say the entire thing, but for the business. 
Okay. And the other question I would have then is if, if it was business related stuff, um, you're, you, I heard you mention that you had a lot of, um, uh, equipment, um, PS4s, things like that. You're saying that you owned these prior to realizing that you were insolvent, correct? Uh, when you think about that, I would say yes, that's correct. Okay. And, Naming of, yes. and other business expenses like purchasing games, um, for your streaming content, company uh you you purchase these games also with hey, let me let me just reword that have you purchased any games um since october in october yes on credit lines are you specifically right. referring to or yes on credit lines well i'm trying to establish no, I, where insolvency was realized so that we can sort of come to an understanding that any purchases made on credit post insolvency wouldn't be dischargeable so what this guy's trying to argue is, is if you realize that you were insolvent in January of 2019, you realized you can't pay this money back ever, but then you went with your credit card to give it a whole bunch of shit for your business. Well, if you're going to ask for bankruptcy protection, that's fine. But any purchases that you made in your credit card past the point of insolvency, you can't discharge. This, this is bad faith. You can't do this. You can't say, I'm filing for bankruptcy. I'm going to go run up a whole bunch of credit and then discharge that in a chapter seven or some shit. You can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. Um, you, 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 if you can establish that, then you can ask the bank, well, hold on. I don't want these debts to fall under this bankruptcy protection. Yeah, no, I did not make any purchases uh, on credit after my initial conversation with my bankruptcy attorney in October. Okay. And uh, that, sure. Another thing too. Um, so you made all these purchases for these equipment systems. I'm assuming that's the bulk of your, uh, your business expenses as far as, you know, having to buy the equipment, having to buy the games, things like that. Uh, reviewing your filing, it looks like you, you stated here that you have about $5,000 a month in business expenses. Can you, can you itemize that for me? Yikes. 5000 a month in business expenses? Sounds like he's trying to write off. This is a total guess. I wonder if he's trying to write off his entire property or something as a business expense. I know there's going to be a fucking... There's this legendary thing called the home office deduction that you have to be really careful of. Now, legally speaking, if there is a section of your dwelling that is 100% dedicated to the service of a business, that percentage of your rent or mortgage can be written off as a business expense as a sole proprietor. You can do that. Some people go a little crazy with this, though. Um, careful on that home office deduction. Here we go. Hold on. Do you take the credit or do you ignore it? I think you should. The home office credit is huge. Like, in every place that I've lived in, like, I have a whole fucking room that I can only use for streaming. Fuck it, dude. I'll defend that shit every day to the fucking IRS. I pay for a big-ass fucking apartment because i got a dedicated goddamn room to stream. Or back in my house in Omaha, I've got all these extra fucking computers laying around that I build and shit. Like, I've got to pay for air conditioning because I'm benching, like, four of these systems at once. This shit makes sense. Yeah, you better fucking believe it. I'll take that deduction and I'll defend it. 100%, of course. This is super defensible. If I have entire sections of my house that are fucking locked off for my personal use because I have like business shit and everything set up here i've got all these fucking lights around i got my shit all set up or whatever yeah i think it's a defensible i think it's totally defensible i've heard people say that it ups the ability for the irs to audit you that it's like one of those red flags but i mean like it's a legitimate tax credit if you're storing equipment somewhere or if you've got parts of your house that are unusable due to the service of your business i think it's a defensible tax credit of course it's a, it's a really valuable one just don't overdo it um nancy they're I, I'm not sure his this person is for Citibank. I'm sorry, excuse me? Uh, I'm not sure. Are, are you... I, I'm... I'm calling, a, really I'm calling for, representing Citibank. Yes, yeah, Citibank. What, what are you talking about? Right, are you an attorney or, a, like, what's your position at Citibank? Or... Uh, this doesn't seem... Um, this seems like a sort of an attempt to back out of answering the very transparent question reviewing these files, which is... Oh, uh, this guy calling is a troll. This guy is a subhuman fuck. I hope the court finds him and I th they throw the fucking book at them. Dude, people that go out of their way... Phil is a dumb fuck, dude. This guy makes a lot of dumb decisions. But the guy calling in right now is literally worse than anything that Phil has ever done in his life. Like, why would you take somebody that literally has to file for bankruptcy and try to fuck with them on the phone just because you're too much of a loser to have literally anything going on in your life that you feel like this level of commitment to fucking with somebody? What a disgusting fucking piece of shit. Yeah, this is why his voice sounds so good. It's because he's the one making the recording, too. Like, this guy is actually, like, mentally ill. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Holy shit. 
how did you even get the call? Um, it wouldn't surprise me if somehow there was like a number put out or whatever. Like if you've got like there's probably some public filing for the bankruptcy. And if you feel like you have um, what is it called? If you have standing to make a claim or something against them, maybe they give a number for you to call in for if you file some easy paperwork or something. Is that he has no, $5,000 a month in business expenses, which does not make any sense. In collections at Citibank up here on a case. So this seems a little strange. We'll answer the question. But okay, it just... great. I think, I don't know fuck all about the court shit. I think the lawyer should make him prove that he has standing and that he's actually representing Citibank here. Um, like, like especially if he works with Citibank, I feel like he should, um, I feel like he should have like statements or something where he's asking Phil like, hey, like I can see in your statements that you made XYZ purchase. This blanket decision to ask him to like talk about his entire business expense, I, I don't know how these depositions work from a legal manner, but like it feels to me like I shouldn't have to answer that to you. You go to the fucking city bank. You don't need to know my fucking personal expenses. Fuck you. Like if I make a public filing on anything, you can read it there, but I'm not going to divulge to you every personal expense I make. If you want to talk about my credit card statements, sure, but I don't know why you would have to divulge to um, to a city bank guy what all your expenses are. I don't know, but I could I could be totally wrong on that. That's just a feeling I have. But answering the question. As long as we've established that he's realized that he was insolvent in October, that's that's really all I needed. So it's fine. I mean, I don't want to cut your questions off. I'm just trying to make sure that you're understanding the forms the way they're intended. Right. I understand. He's claiming that he's got $5,000 a month in expenses and only $5,000 a month in income and nets about $35, which still doesn't really make any sense to me when he's claiming that he gets uh, $1,000 from YouTube. Um, four thousand dollars from Twitch. That's five thousand right there. But then he's also claiming that he gets these donations or tips or, or whatever it is through his through his stream itself, which is separate from the service paying him for streaming. I understand your question. Do you have a further even if that was separate from the service that's paying him, it still should ultimately show up on these tax forms. That should be on a ten ninety nine somewhere, unless Phil hasn't included that somewhere. Um, also, it's entirely possible that Phil could be paying 5000 a month in business expenses while netting 5000 a month, and it might be that personal expenditures are being placed on credit cards. So it's possible that all the money that he's making in his business is being spent on his business, but all of the extra things he needs to buy, so for instance, buying groceries, paying on house bills or whatever, could be put on credit cards, which would 100% absolve Phil of this question. I've already broken down how my expenses work. I don't know what this uh, this gentleman is referencing specifically. Um, you know, I, uh, all the information is there, so I don't know exactly what he's yep, looking Yep, that's the right answer. Fuck you. Go through the form. If you've got a specific question, you can ask it. But Phil doesn't need to justify what's already written on a fucking form. Like, if you're going to come on here and act like a smartass and ask questions, you need better, more pointed questions than that. And you should be able to find, like, there's a lot of tax law here we can debate about or argue about in terms of, like, what Phil is claiming. But if you're not even familiar enough with the forms to see the, uh, like, the actual, like, deductions. So I don't know if they, maybe Phil hasn't itemized them, but, like, if he, it, like, and maybe that's not publicly available, but I mean, like, <clears throat> I don't understand. I, I don't understand. I'm just asking you to explain your expenses. You don't. Fuck you. Which we've done. Which we've done. Mm -hmm. So why are you asking again? I do not see anywhere that adds up to five thousand dollars of expenses monthly, or or that warrants paying extra money for video games and things post October when you realize that you were insolvent. Right, but what you're talking about is strictly related to Citibank purchases is if, if I'm understanding. Correct. If you have a question, then you ask it about what you see on one of your forms. Why are you helping other creditors here? Like, and if anything, it's funny because you could tell this guy's trying to fuck with, with Phil because if anything, if he was Citibank and he had a chunk of Phil's debt, I wouldn't want Phil to go through like all of his fucking, I just want what's on my statement. You spent $2,000 in October. What did you spend that on? I don't want you to talk about everything else. What if you say some dumb shit that shows that another creditor has more fucking, um, more of a, more of a claim to your income than I do. What the fuck? Like, I don't want to talk to you about every single fucking experience. I just want to talk about what you owe me. Like, that should be my goal as a creditor is to, is to recoup as many costs as I can or to block off as much from, from bankruptcy protection as possible. Not to give you some blanket fucking statements about everything you may or may not owe. I don't want to help these other fuckheads on the call with their fucking job. Like, Citibank, if this guy was actually in the employee of Citibank, they're not paying this guy to help every other creditor get their fucking money back. Understanding this correctly, you're wondering if there were any purchases after October on the Citibank cards, but you have access. I'm to asking those about any cards. cards, any lines of credit. I'm trying to figure out when he realized he was insolvent, if he continued making credit purchases after that time. And we've already—he's already stated that he is not. 
Okay. As long so as that's I'm... on the record, great. Thank you. He claimed he purchased the debt. Even if this guy did purchase the debt, that doesn't mean that he represents Citibank. If I were to go and buy a chunk of debt from some company, then I own that debt and I represent myself as a debt collector. Like, I'm not here recovering money on behalf of Citibank. I've already bought the debt from Citibank. Like, unless Citibank is employing me or contracting me specifically to recover a debt for them, like, well, that's my debt now. I'm not representing Citibank. That's just my debt. I own that. That's Stephen Bonnell LLC's debt or whatever that I'm trying to recoup the costs on then. How pathetic. Holy shit. Fuck. I, dude, if these people, if people that did shit like this, like troll process, this has to be, would you, not like torturous interference, right? There's no way. I don't know. I don't know if this is technically illegal, but like, God, it would be so satisfying to see people like these, like how their lives destroyed and shit would be so fucking funny. Every time you like dig into people like this too, they're always pathetic. It's always some, can I, I'll be a little ableist or whatever. It's always some like 400 pound fucking loser that's sitting in his basement all day that has nothing, does nothing, hasn't done anything ever, is doing nothing in their lives. That are just like their whole, the whole purpose of their life is just fuck with people online or whatever. It's so satisfying to see people like these get fucked up. Oh my God. Not like violently, but just like in other things in their life. It's so fucking funny. That's, that was on the record. Yeah. Thank earlier. you. Okay, do you have any other questions? Nope. That's it. Okay. Are there other creditors on the phone who want to ask questions? Now would be the time to unmute and ask a question and identify yourself. If there are no further people on the phone. My guess is going to be if this guy really did, like, okay. I am 100% talking shit. This might not be true. My guess would be is that if you're filing bankruptcy collections, if you've got like twenty or 30000 in debt spread across like 10 different creditors. I don't think they give enough of fuck to actually send people. Like, I can't, what would I have to pay? What would the hourly rate be that I would have to pay a lawyer to sit on a fucking phone to like manage to, to figure out what this guy owes, how much you can recover? Like, no fucking way is it fucking worth it. Like, this motherfucker owes us $3,000, okay? Fucking jp chase or whatever we're gonna send our fucking top paid attorney to sit online with fucking dsp phil so we can see if we can get like 300 bucks back like you're gonna spend so much more try this is why debt collectors exist guys is because it's not worth it for these huge fucking uh companies to like sit on a phone to, to try and get your debt they sell it for, like okay this guy owes us a thousand bucks listen dude i'll sell you his debt for 50 bucks like go good luck go get it man it's your debt now okay recover what you can this is why if somebody calls you for debt collection if somebody calls you you should always try to settle that guy that's calling you saying hey you owe target five thousand that credit card that motherfucker bought that debt for 300 bucks okay like listen man i'm sorry my grandpa died um you know i've got like i've got a thousand dollars now like maybe i could give you that but that's all i have like if we can pay that now like maybe that's it blah blah, blah. like fucking cry do whatever pay that motherfucker as low as you can he bought that debt for pennies on the dollar do not go out of your way to appease a fucking debt collector okay pay him as little as you fucking can do not just just like offer to pay the full sum immediately. Now, I say that not as rock solid financial advice. You should be mindful of how this impacts your credit, but you should always try to negotiate with, with debt collectors. 100%. You absolutely should try to negotiate. Who are going to ask questions or identify themselves? I have no further questions. Is that someone jumping in? Okay. Why am I poisoning? Why am I toxic? <laughs> Michelle, so do you have the identification information with you? I do. I'm looking at a Washington State driver's license, which is correct. And I'm also looking at a Social Security card, and the number matches that on the petition. Okay, there appears to be no further creditors who are asking questions. I have no further questions. You are excused, and you may hang up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was easy. Dude. That was easy.
I think DSP has some of the most dedicated haters on the entire internet. It's pretty fucking insane. Like the links that people will go through to fuck with him. You want it? You want your teacher to bump your grade up one, up five percent? Tell him a fucking twenty-minute story. Fuck him. And that's the way you got to think about it. As you're telling a story, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to tell someone a story. I'm trying to come up with a twenty-minute story. What do I want to do? Do I want to entertain them? Do I want to have a poignant message at the end of it? No, if I'm trying, if, if someone is standing between me and money or success or, you know, whatever, a, a, a bureaucrat in a roadblock position, I'm, when I'm telling them the story, I'm thinking, fuck you. Yep. You're going to sit here with me for 25 fucking minutes and you're going to listen to my sad story. I could pay like 40% of it right now, cash, but I only got cash because I got money for the pills. I don't have any money in take. I only have, four, I got 4,000. What do I owe you? 16,000? Ah, dude. I got 4000 now, but the only way I can pay it is if I pay off all the debt, but that's only because I got the pills. Well, that money's going to be gone tomorrow. You make the collections agency think that you have money one time, and it's going to be gone tomorrow, and this is the only time they're going to be able to recoup any amount of the debt. They will, they will sell Okay, it. I don't know if this always works, but this is what I did with my student loan debt. I owed 25000 and I like I said that I had like fifteen grand that I could pay, but like we can work out a payment or whatever, and they let me settle my student loan debt for fifteen grand. <laughs> okay? I don't know if it always works, but... I paid mine for a lot less than, than I owed 25 and I ended up paying 15. That let me make three payments of $5,000 and I paid it off in three months. For half of what you owe, like minimum, okay? But that's not the main point. The main point is that... However, I was also defaulted on my student loan debt for the better part of a decade. So, <laughs> so I, my credit was really bad for a long time. So You tell them a story. They ask you what you can do. And instead of firing back... What's with my credit score now? My credit score now is in the fucking heavens. If I told you, you wouldn't fucking believe me, okay? My credit score is so good. View your FICO credit score. Click. Unless it went down this month. My credit score is 807. Holy fuck. I just want to borrow money all the time. I'm borrowing. <sighs> no, you're doing $8 a month. That's it right there. We don't have any of these credit score memes in New Zealand. Oh, listen, dude. Credit is just... It's a big racket in the United States. It's a fucking huge game you got to play. Yeah, I think the max credit score that you want, I think, is usually like 740. I think is where the most prime rates are. Why is it worse to have... Well, it's not worse. It's just pointless. Like, I think the best... Like, I think the most like prime rates that you can possibly get are usually around... Like, once you get the 740, like, having more than that doesn't help you, I don't think. Fuck Mr. Moten. I finished Doom last night. We finished Doom last night with zero lives left. Holy shit. I almost got... I think Mood gave up. I don't remember what his final stance was or not. I think he said he said fuck it, though. We started to lose it. We started to tilt really hard. I missed two BFG shots in a row. I have six lives. This chain gun is so good for this part. Wait, did I break it? Nope. You didn't, you dumb fuck. Move! You missed like 90% of the BFG shots? Yeah, I didn't. Like, hitting the BFG on this guy was super hard for me. Why does it suck so much? The Unmaker would have been nice to shoot off the armor plates. Does it have long range? You also got fucked on that one glitch. Wait, which glitch fucked me? Oh, I have four lives Only going to the boss. Only low information voters want League. 
Last week was so much great content, like donking on Red Pill, Eric Stryker, and Doom. Fuck League, thank you. Oh my god, I killed the Marauder and then the game glitched and I had to reload the section and I lost one or two lives? Fuck, that fucking triggered the fuck out of me. I'm loading. Okay, never mind. We're in, or if it buffers again, we'll fuck it. I don't think these last bosses are that hard as long as you don't Is get bad? bullshitted. Wait, I didn't know if that portal would kill me. There's not as many monsters that spawn around the boss as I would expect there to be. It's just understanding and avoiding the boss's bullshit attacks. You never used the sword? The sword was scary because it doesn't have anywhere near as much hook as like the glory it's kills do. Portal. Okay, this attack sucks. Yeah, that fire shit? This guy has a lot of bad attacks. Maybe- I think I might spend too much time on these smaller enemies too. Maybe I just shouldn't kill them at all. Fuck it. Why doesn't he just like step on the platform and crush me? Feel like the last level could have been more visually interesting than the concrete jungle? Yeah, maybe. There's a lot of visually interesting stuff in this game though, so... This game looks really, really nice. Not just like the graphics are good. They are, and it's smooth as fuck, which it is. But, um... The level design, there's like a lot of variety in like... Appearance. The Like, the love- the way that this game looks is how... There's a period of time where every single fucking shooter, every single area was just some washed out blue-gray fucking design on every single- it was so boring. Um, and then this game looks like really, really nice. Arm? The hover tank guys, you shot their bodies while they were still in tank mode? Wait, is shooting the bodies of the tank mode guys a total waste of shots? Oh, you don't get to use the gigantic Doom guy, Max? I wasted a BFG shot. I don't know if this one actually hits. How about nope. the Metal Gear run or set up your PS for FF7? Maybe someday, my dude. I don't like the shield, by the way, on the minigun. I'll never level that ability. If I do an Ultra Nightmare playthrough. I don't think it- because there's so many things that it doesn't block. It doesn't- like, it doesn't block any of the really hard shit that you'd want it to block. It just blocks worthless shots so you can dodge anyway. Fuck that shit. Shield thing is bullshit. You can destroy the tank dude's shed with a single blood punch? Oh, okay. How many times did I see Dinah's first modern encounter? Was it one time or more? The dog fucks me. Oh my god, I've lost two lives. I thought I was gonna die. We're reliving the moments from last night. Oh my god. I wasn't watching for a second, sorry. I died twice somehow. That's okay though. Two lives in the bank. Easy shit, boys. Wait. Hold on. Getting hit by a lot of a lot of bullshit. You had one extra life. Oh yeah, not last night this morning. <laughs> Why did I sword this dude? Oh no, I chanced at him. Okay. Oh, wrong shotgun! Uh, got a lot of shit going on here. I hate these guys. Snake dudes? I need a rocket launcher them way more. You're blocking your reaction? I can't see what body part is like alive or not. That's hard too. It's hard to tell like what I need to shoot at still. It's really annoying. Not that. Oh, arms. I think that. I think it's dead. I wish there was a. I just fucking shot myself in the fucking ground. One life left, guys. One extra, so two total? Two total, yes. Are they all dead? Where's my fodder? Uh! I don't think we're gonna do it, boys. I switched to my- I have my extra life <laughs> just in case. Now I have to get my character to put on the extra life rune. Stop fucking lagging. 
our whole run. This is 20 hours of work, okay? About to be dead in our final hour. I didn't realize when I, when I killed that final face though, he'd be like pretty much completely dead. That was kind of anticlimactic. I don't know why I'm trying to shoot my shotgun. Fuck that! Okay, whatever. I kill him. There you go. Spoiler alert. This lags too much. Wait. Never mind. I hate this form of debate. It's fucking stupid. Anybody that listens to this, or this is the dumbest fucking thing. No one can convince me, even in academics, that this is this is so stupid. They should just be written responses from each other. What is it? I think, is this called forum debate? Basically, every single word you say counts. So the goal is to just prepare all of your arguments and say as much of it as fucking possible, and then the judges have to, like, rule on what's said, basically. So the goal is just, you just have to say as much as fucking possible. It's so stupid. Oh, Lincoln Douglas? Or... They all have a copy of it anyway they're reading. Yeah, I know. Everyone gets a transcript. That's why I said it should all just all this debate should just be done via text or whatever. This is so ugh. I hate this. Then why say it so fast? Because it doesn't count unless you actually get it the words out of your mouth. I think this is a uh, the super speed response or something. Is it? Does this serve a purpose? No. What does it prepare you for? More debate in this format, in this hyper specific format. Okay, hello? Hello. Yellow? Yellow? Hey. Hi. What up, Duder? Um, nothing much. Cool. Just, uh, going through Tinder. Is it is it irresponsible to hang out with people on Tinder? I mean, like, if you're on Tinder, right, you probably don't have Corona. Maybe, I don't know. Right, like, it's not, it's not a big deal. You think? I don't know, my dude. Good luck. Don't die. <sighs> is it is okay? Is it dumb? Like okay, so like if I ask somebody like, hey, can you show me like your papers? Is I'm getting tested or something? Is that like? Is it, should I even papers be get it? tested for corona? Yeah. Well, how can you preemptively get tested for corona? What do you mean? Can't you just get tested? Can you just go to the... Like, I don't think they're doing that? that right now. Like, the whole point in the U.S. has been the difficulty in getting these tests. It's been one of the biggest things. Darius is the type of guy to ask for their fucking corona test when he doesn't have one himself. I know I don't have corona. That's what they'll say, dumbass. 
Well, I know for a fact. Come down well, here. if I do have corona, then what's the problem with me hanging out with someone else who has corona? I don't know. You're the one who wants to see their fucking papers, dog. Come down well, here, Darius. Well, if they don't have corona, then I don't want to give them corona. Down Live here. By the coon. Die by the coon. Go. I fucked up pretty bad. I told um, my work I, I wanted to take off a day, like last week, because I was getting a corona virus test. What? You yeah, can't do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, they took it. They accepted it. And uh, they asked me today. They're like, oh, Darius, by the way, uh, when you took off that day, uh, oh. did you get your test results back? Come here. Come here. Fuck oh, it. We're going in. We're going in. We're going in. Can I respond to what Darius just said? What? Which part? Darius, you don't have to show them anything, so I hope you didn't sit, like put anything anything to jeopardize yourself like you have to provide no proof the fact that you would volunteer the info of a yes or no if you were positive or negative uh like that's you know you just say yeah i i wasn't positive and then leave it at that they can't request records or anything yeah, they ask why can't they ask time. because it's uh hipaa like it's medical i know shit. that it's they hipaa no but they, they can't, hipaa just means that they can't like look into it themselves why couldn't they request it because I don't think they have any obli- Darius has no obligation to- No, you don't have an that. obligation, but they could just fucking fire you, right? If you go into work somewhere. Sorry. I was getting yelled at. Um, say that again, Destiny? I I'm not saying that, like, HIPAA means that they can't look at their records without you giving them permission. It doesn't mean they can't yeah. ask about it. Uh, I think there are certain things they're not allowed to even ask for. Like, there's no requirement for them you to divulge that. Like, it has nothing to do with your job. It's, it's like not about it being required! It's about them asking! If I want to fuck a girl and I say, Hey, do you have HIV? And whoa, she's like, whoa, whoa, Well, whoa. actually, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, even ask. demand that. Yeah, of course I can't demand that, but I can ask. They can, if, I imagine your worker probably ask, Were you sick? Do you have corona? They don't, they okay, can't demand on. it. They hold can't on. look right, at your right, records without right, right, you seeing. Yes, but if you don't hey, want to respond, Steve, if you're like, Oh, I don't Steve. know. They can be like, Okay, well, we're just going to fucking Steve. fire your ass. I think that's okay. Fuck you, Lycan! Get out of here! Dan, shut up. Sorry. Okay. First, go. Of all, don't take your league shit out for me. Second of all, give me one second and I will get you an answer to that. Okay, thank you. Because I'm pretty confident that they are not allowed to even ask for it, but I will verify. We'll yeah, let's that do that. Okay, just verify it. Destiny, don't link me shit. I don't care. I'm like 99% positive that an employer is allowed to ask you medical questions that are necessary for you to do work. I, I almost know that's true. Like, you can't fucking fill out an application online for fucking work and then like, oh, cool, you want to be like a new loader at the fucking dock? Awesome. And you show, you fucking wheel yourself in to the fucking job site. Like, oh, by the way, I'm fucking handicapped. Hope that's not a problem. Hippa, hippa, hippa. Like, I'm almost positive that's not a thing. Okay. I'm sorry. I love you, Lycan. For someone that actually works in, the, in HR to give me an answer, but cursory read says that uh, an, an employer can ask about a medical condition if it's, if it's necessary. Not a condition might affect the Your employee's yes. ability to do their job. Yeah, that sounds um, about right. Yeah. So like, if there's a quarantine going around, and you uh, said that you got something about Corona, my job's uh, working from home, so it's different. You got this? If you're working from home, then why would they ask you anything about your fucking testing for Corona, Darius? Because I, that's why I took off of work. Even. But I fucked up really bad anyway, because I, I heard- so I didn't know anything about the testing process. Can you to walk me through the conversation where they're like, How did you test on your dude- on your thing, dude, since I know you're working from home? Can you please walk me through that conversation? How, okay. how did- yeah, go. They called me and they were like, hey, Darius, we noticed that you requested this day off to go get a corona test. Okay. Um, so we were just wondering, do you have, like, any documentation for that? And I was like, uh, yeah, I do. Um, Why did you run from him? I hate this fucking game. Why would you run when he uncloaks? He's begging to die. Oh, my God. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, and he dies anyway. Wow, 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 wow! Down with the sickness! I'm not there at all, so good luck, dude. That's all you, man. This just ga this game is way too much for me. You're welcome. I saved that for you, by the way. You happy now? But anyway, so, I talked Okay, up. so the question is, is, does an employer have a right to see a doctor's note if you took time off for work? Now, my guess is going to be, since there's specific policies relating to 
like FMLA, like family or medical leave of absence, my guess is going to be, since there are special provisions for that, they're probably allowed to ask for proof that you actually had said medical condition or actually went to the doctor. That's my guess. Now, maybe it's not that way. I don't know. Can <clears throat> employer ask for proof, doctor, visit, time off, sickness? Let's find out. Let's check. Maybe they can't. That would be the question we would look up, though. And while you look that up, I think uh, one of my things that I, I kind of got jumbled in my head was I was also thinking of explicit medical records. Mm -hmm. um, like, so it's pretty easy to like, you know, hey, doctor, can you write this thing and say, you know, I, hey, I came here to get tested. Like, I, I could find a doctor to do that. Um, but he wouldn't have to provide any like concrete records of it. Sure. Maybe not. Let's check. Honkers. Unpaid time off may result in the employer requiring proof of illness. So, they can ask. Are we done? Can we move on from this? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sorry, I'm liking. Right. No! Right. Don't apologize. Listen. I'm just, I'm playing League, and when Daddy plays League, he just, he gets like this. Okay? I'm sorry for shouting at you. Okay? I'm sorry, Papa. Please don't pull out the switch again. Friends. Well, anyway, um, I heard Trump say that it took him like 40 minutes, and they asked me how long it took me, and I said, yeah, like 40 minutes. So I, I thought that's how long the process was supposed to be, but it was not the case. So You're not they... smart enough to pull moves like this off, okay? Just just be a chill kitty guy, okay? Stop. Why not just say you have a fucking cold? Why would you lie? Uh, because I thought we were getting paid time off for it. Oh, Pay time off for Corona. Oh, you actually are fucking yourself then. You're just fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, okay. My bad. You were just trying to game the fucking system. Okay. Now I understand more. Okay. Yeah, I, so you were yeah. going for some special Corona fucking exemption or some shit. Yeah, and then when they told me they weren't doing it. Uh, if you were, if there was a special provision for people specifically with Corona to get paid time off due to a sick leave. Well, no, not for that. It was for people to go get the test. Twitch is about to kill me and I'm going to get triggered for it. Never mind. No, he's not. Fuck Twitch. Yeah. Um. I'm 95% that Darius is going to be on a future can't pay, we'll take it away, as he gets evicted for pulling some shit. <laughs> Darius, you're the reason that Republicans have the talking points they do. Like no, he's actually the reason that Democrats blame. have the talking points they do, because Darius probably makes decent money, but he abuses the system. Whoa! I make... <laughs> How much do I make? I make like, uh, like 1600 a month. Doing what? Wait, what the fuck do you do? Uh... Have you seen his news? Holy shit. Yeah. I'm an engineer for a, uh, a big company. What kind of engineer? You don't work for the company, right? You're contracted. Is that He's what you mean to say? You right now, also. You're w 2 as an engineer, and you make 1600 a month. You don't make 20000 a year? What kind of engineer is this? Uh, it's a supportive engineer. So you do IT, that's what you mean to say. Um, uh, no. He helps boomers figure out where the fucking start button is, let's be real. He helps boomers fix their computer over the phone. No, I do engineer cry. work because... Oh yes, I'm an engineer from Microsoft. Oh, Are you a help desk engineer, I'm a, I'm a customer engineer. I Customer think service I, he's literally I, Milton. I use, I use social engineering and things along those lines to do my job. Social engineering? What are you? Are you a fucking hacker? What the fuck? Do you do penetration testing? What does that mean? Well, we do get people that have been fished, and I have to use some social engineering. Wait, Darius, hold on, wait, 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 wait. What does social I engineering mean to you? I'm curious. Um, you engineer somebody socially. Oh, he's Darius. resetting passwords he's all day. With us. He's resetting passwords all day, let's be real. He's fucking with us. Very. this is DGG. You should be honest, okay? You tell the girls on Tinder yeah. that you're an engine fucking Microsoft. You don't tell that to us. That's the first bro code, okay? Now be honest with chat. Tell them what you really do. I am a customer service supervisor. Or... The supervisor in your title? Um, okay, I'm actually a lead. <laughs> okay, well, I'm actually a I'm team actually, leader. Well, I'm actually, I'm actually not even a leader. I'm more like the level two, and not the level oh one. Oh my god! 
<laughs> Boy, the lies how peeling like, back the layers. If you think, if you think about it, the first person has to come to me. So technically, I'm their supervisor, but I don't supervise. Wait, so that's level one. That's the first tier person one. To no, I'm tier two because the machine goes to somebody and oh then. Oh my! To me. But the automated the press one. To... Is tier one. <laughs> press one to reach a tech support now. Serious <laughs> thinks he's level two as a result of that. <laughs> Wait, no, it goes to one more person, then it goes to me. It goes to an actual person. I love It's probably person. the call <laughs> openers, the people you call in and they just take your name and info and pass it on. Okay, and? Darius, you are Milton from Office Space. You're like that guy in the basement who's like, I deal! Watch, 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 watch! Person. Darius, watch this! I'm watching. Witness yeah, him. Never mind. Cringe, bro. Fucking hacker, dude. A lot of people are trying to trigger me this game, but my mental is unshakable. Look at me bringing this one back. Eight and four, guys. So, Darius, what are the odds you get laid off completely now for the stunt you pulled? Um, zero. Uh, well, can he we... can't get laid off because it sounds like he's not actually employed by them. It sounds like he's just contract work. So he doesn't actually get fired or laid off. They just contract him for some number of hours. Oh, yeah. Darius, are you a contractor or are you an employee? I would be a contractor, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Mm. Yeah, so you're like an I Uber that, yeah. driver for tech support. Technically, we're not, um, like the company's, uh, like it's not Apple, it's like the company that I work for. <laughs> so you're not actually a contractor of Apple, you're a con you're a contractor for a subcontractor that Apple uses for tech support. This is literally, I think this started with like, uh, I'm a... We went from fucking, we Apple. went from CFO of Apple to like fucking, you're the guy that takes orders from the Indians that like do tech support overseas. <laughs> Uh, kinda. Darius, just don't lie to your bros. Okay? I'm, just, I'm sorry, Darius. Hold on, actually, I'm sorry. We're not, I'm not making fun of you for your work. It's cool <laughs> no, that you work, that's great. I'm making fun of you because of how fucking far removed you are from the original position you said you had. That's why I'm making fun of you guys. So. Where, I'm tired of having this guy down here, by the on way. On Tinder, it says I'm an engineer, though. It works out. Wait, does that actually work? That shit has never worked for me. Works for me? No, I think the EM Pepe roughly encompasses most of the chatters. I don't think there are very many disenfranchised chatters that feel like they need a third party.